So before a pour can happen, the bond deck is placed over the top with an edge form. The edge form contains the concrete within the area to be poured. And then we have the shear studs that go over the top of the structural steel. That ties the concrete in with the structure itself. And then the reinforcement goes over the top to allow then the concrete to be poured. Once all of that's done, we get an engineer to come out and they will do an inspection to certify that the reinforcement and the structural steel is as per the design and then we order concrete. So what happens at a batching plant is all the ingredients that make up the final mix of the concrete are added. So whether it's uh, cement, sand, aggregates or admixtures that will influence the properties of the concrete and are basically placed into the concrete truck or the concrete agitator, water's added and then the concrete's ready to come to site. The mix design is determined by the structural engineer, which will determine the ratios uh, of sand, cement, aggregate and water that we're going to be using. We'll also potentially add some admixtures, which are chemicals that may alter the, the handling of the concrete or how quickly it goes off, and we'll get them also approved by the structural engineer prior to pouring. At the batching plant, they have a running total of the concrete that's been batched for our project. When they get to the amount of concrete that was ordered, there will always be a balance and the concreter will usually do that after the last truck so that we haven't got uh, a lot of wastage of concrete. When the request is put in for the concrete to be delivered to site, we will ask for a, a certain slump and the certain slump is dependent upon how the concrete will be placed, whether it be via pump or straight out of the agitator. Prior to the concrete coming to site, we need to ensure that we book that concrete in usually within 24 hours before placement of the concrete. We also need to make sure that uh, we've got path of travel organised for the concrete trucks. Our traffic controls bring in the, the trucks in and giving priority access to the concrete trucks so that it's not sitting out on the street for excessive times prior to being placed. So once concrete arrives in a truck on site, the concrete out of the back of the, the truck will be poured into um, the concrete pump's hopper and from there the pump will pump it up onto the um, relative area of the project where it's being poured. Obviously in different areas of the building is different setups. Sometimes you'll have a boom pump which will allow us to pour multi-level. If it's a line pump, it's usually poured either on the level or for a level below, you can use a line pump for that. So when the concrete uh, arrives at the place where you're pouring the concrete, so it's pouring out of either the line pump or the boom, and you've got a man who is controlling the hose, so basically distributing the concrete evenly in a progressive manner from basically the start of the pour to the end of the pour. There's then other crew members of the concrete placing crew that are getting the concrete roughly level. And then there's other people that are then using a, a vibrator, which basically makes sure that the concrete flows into all the aspects of the pour, so in and around reinforcement. And then you've got another uh, couple of people that have got screeding bars that are making it um, basically a smooth finish. And those screeding bar crew work in conjunction with someone who's holding a laser level to make sure that the concrete's going in at the correct RL or reduced level that's, uh, that it's been designed to go into. Yes, so after it's been poured, you need to let the concrete go off or cure a little bit, and then bits of equipment called a, a chopper or a helicopter come on, which is a mechanical troweling tool that's got blades um, that spin and basically smooth the concrete off, so you've got a nice smooth and uniform finish. And the degree at which that's finished on the slab will be determined by the type of finish that the architect wants, whether it's a completely smooth finish, slightly rough, it all depends on what the finished floor application will be.